played for 13 seasons and missed all but six games of the 89 season following surgeries on both feet. Whoa. That's crazy. Boots dictionary and pick What's out that Oh my god. Nah, Larry can play the day late. What's up, Jerry? What's up, bro? Today we got making the case for Larry Bird, man. Y'all been recommending it. Y'all rocked the last Larry Bird jersey, man. Had to put on the bird, the bird jersey, man. I had one. I did have one. Like I said in another video, I had a bird jersey. I just never watched his highlights for real. And if you go watch that video, a lot of y'all rock with it. Ah, right, you can tell. I never really seen his highlights. I was kind of in awe. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that first and then come back here. Because everybody that was there was recommending this. So everybody that's there, I expect y'all to be here. Making the case for Larry Bird. I guess this is be making the case for his acclaim to goatness. I guess because a lot of people don't mention him when that goat conversation comes up. So I guess this is making the case for him. I guess. If you're new, go follow TikTok. Follow TikTok. Follow TikTok. We post short clips over there, man. Go follow that. Um, if you're from TikTok, what's up? This is YouTube. Let's get in. To it. Recommend IG comment section. The size of the court and the lack of pads or helmets oh my God. fans the most intimate experience of a team sport that exists. And because of the different styles that basketball allows for, players develop their own distinct identities and signature styles through their creativity. That's so beautiful. Flair. Pistol. And athleticism. Hey! And although no one succeeds alone, the scoring volume and two-way nature of the sport give individual Lay. stars Glasses. an unprecedented amount of control over Dang. the outcome of a game. For this reason, players are constantly compared to their peers and to the legends of the past in order to answer the most hotly contested Who's the greatest player sport. of all time? Who's the greatest to ever do it? Yep. For many, the question is redundant. They believe in only one right answer. Their answer. Others might have their own personal stance, mm -hmm. but acknowledge one or two alternatives. Yeah. But I believe that there's much more nuance to the question of greatness and more answers to it than you might think. Okay, explain By that my to count, me. There are eight players in NBA history that have a substantial claim as the GOAT. It's a subjective thing, though. Okay. I can't give you a definitive answer. All LeBron. All I can do is make the argument. So today, I'll be making the case for Larry Bird. Larry Legend. Legend. All right, everybody that thinks Larry Bird is the GOAT. Go right now, go down in the comment section right now and put an astronaut. Put whatever astronaut you want. If you think Larry's a goat, put an astronaut. Basketball player. Put an astronaut and then a little Celtic symbol. If you think Larry's a goat, put an astronaut and then a Celtic symbol. Making the case to Larry Legend. Fly like a bird. Larry oh my Bird God. is the smartest, clutchest player to ever play the game. Good hit. Now, if you don't think that Larry Bird is the greatest basketball player of all time, oh you probably God. hate that I just said that. Those are the kind he of talking heads, sport cliches hand. that surely impact the game, but are impossible to empirically measure. Normally, I'd agree with you, but I think that when you talk about Larry Bird, you see those intangibles become real, palpable results. Okay. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't believe it. Explain. When Larry Bird was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1978, the NBA needed saving. Attendance was in the toilet. The league had few marketable stars. So only Kareem had several players in its grasp. David Thompson. And the most damning of all, playoff games were being tape delayed. Playoff games at the highest level of basketball they were, were being put in the back seat for black and white movies and network reruns. But what? The, the NBA after. was that bad? Bro, they weren't even watching the NBA live. You telling me the NBA was the stuff that plays like 2 in the morning? Like the stuff that we used to. So, like, if you ever watch Cartoon Network or anything, or all these, oh, they play the stuff from like 10 years ago at like 2 in the morning. Because nobody really watches that stuff anymore, except for people that's diehard fans, they go back and watch it. They had the NBA like that. Imagine not watching Taking sports live. Overall, Larry Bird decided to return for his final year at Indiana State, a decision that would prove to be one of the most important in the oh, history blicky. of the sport. Bird's final year saw the Sycamores tear through college basketball, going 33-0 before the national championship. 33-0. Bird, already claimed by the NBA's most historic and prestigious franchise, had established himself as the generational talent who would inherit the mantle of pro basketball. Already claimed. Indiana State's opponent in the national championship was Michigan State, captained by the immortal Irvin Magic Johnson. The oh, the so, the, so the Lay Bird Magic thing just didn't start in... I did not know this. See, look, I'm out of the loop on a lot of this. I'm only like, last 15 years is about, 
Ah, uh, last 20 years about my knowledge. I'm out the loop when it really comes down to the 90s. I know a little bit. I'm out the loop when it comes to the 80s. I did not know this at all. At all. I did not know they faced each other. In, like, I didn't know this is where this started. Talented Spartans in the highest rated game in the history. I knew Magic played at Michigan State. At any level still to this and I knew Larry played at Indiana. The stage had been State. set. The next decade of basketball would be defined by, by the these two players. Between the white hick from French Lick and his Boston Celtics <laughs> and the black magic and his Showtime Lakers. <laughs> The rivalry between Bird and Johnson is entwined into the fabric of the NBA and is worthy of a hundred documentaries. In this video, though, mm. we're going to be looking at Bird's claim of supremacy. Here's Bird's basketball resume. Three championships. Three championships come with perhaps the highest. I reacted to the Magic too, so of any player's championships. His three MVPs came consecutive, Got three. making him only the third player to accomplish the feat, along with Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. Okay, that was at that time. Finals MVPs are misleading. He was absolutely the best player on the 81 Celtics, but he was only a sophomore, and his 15 points per game in the finals oh. gave the media an excuse to, to not give a it to him on a legendarily difficult interview. His all-star and first so really got three. also come with the caveat that Bird only played for 13 seasons and missed all but six games of the 89 season following surgeries on both feet. Whoa, that's I you crazy. A 13-year career, and this guy is supposed to be the GOAT? What color of paint are you huffing, Clayton? No, but there's, 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 okay, I do like that, like a LeBron in his case, or Kareem, a sustained long time they dominated basketball, two decades almost for LeBron, two decades almost for Kareem, I like that, but there's something to be said when you come into the league also, and you maybe play from that 7 to 12 range, and you come in and you dominate in that short period of time, and you run that short period of time, like, you run it. For the short period, of, everybody knows you the best. There's something about being said there. That's a beauty in that, too. I like sustained greatness, but Obviously. I like short greatness a little bit, but too. But hear me out. Yeah, Bird's career lasted about two-thirds as long as it should have. But what he did in that time was so impressive and so substantial that every basketball And 13 years is not even that, that bad. Of, that's like a long career. The greatest ever. Doesn't it matter that those 13 years saved professional basketball, delivered a disproportionate amount of memorable moments, defined the golden age of the league, and produced a career Ooh. by which all other forwards, before or since, are measured? Bird squeezed he every drop of talent did. out in those 13 years and made it seem He did like set 30. the measurement for basically small forwards. He left so much of his oh DNA in the sport that it needed a cigarette afterwards. There's something to be said about the candle that lasts half as long and burns twice as bright. Oh Those my! Three MVP God. years stack up with any other run by any other player. What's your points? Twenty-six. I will put an A plus Larry Bird season up against ten, ten seven. No, that's Does still a plus Larry Bird season. That can win MVP today. A full box score, a blowout win. A nearly undefeated record at home and a play style that can yeah, nah, he definitely with those stats will win MVP today too. White. He won the day too. Isn't just a white basketball player. He's the white basketball player. To describe Larry Bird's Woo. game is to thumb through the Hoots dictionary and pick out Step back. Oh my about white nah, players. Larry can play the day like uh uh like that's the people are just now starting to catch on to that behind the back bring it back Step back, pull up. people are just now catching on to that now. Like recently with the James Harden, Luca is kind of getting back into that. Uh, behind the back, step back, pull up. They start. They just now catching like, on now. Like shooter, the last ten years, we ain't really had nobody. The archetype of Twenty ten down, we ain't had nobody is Larry after Bird, Larry Bird. One exception. That was doing that. An unparalleled understanding of the game of basketball, both Ooh. as a physical contest and as a mental competition. Oh my gosh! Basketball IQ infected everything he did and catapulted his career into legend. Bird was a complete player. Jerry West called him nearly as perfect as you can get. He was the yeah. league's first great marksman. He could contort his body to shoot from anywhere on the court, regardless of the level of defense. See, this gets me every he time. He pioneered the art of the dagger three and was the founding member Bang. of the 50-40-90 club. At 6'9", Bird's understanding of angles and coordination led to a higher rebounding average than Patrick Ewing. And That's it crazy. made him an impressively adept finisher in his younger years. Oh my god. 86, Bird dropped 47 points on the Blazers, playing the majority of the game with his left hand. I heard about this. His lack of quick lateral movement That's wild. meant that Bird didn't do much when it came to slapping the floor and picking up the opposing Play with it on defense. But his size and omniscience gave him the ability to body similarly sized players. Like, look at him fast, though. Like a free safety and pick off Give me that. Lanes oh my. Ease. His passing was transcendent, and I'll <sighs> highlight it later. And of course, you need to know that Larry Bird was a tough M effort. 
had a superhuman motor and dove for loose balls like a beagle. Yeah, nah, he's out there putting he his body on the line. participant in his share of fights, often precipitated Woo! by his league-renowned trash talk. Reverend told Robert Reed he'd rather stay there. He should have stayed in preaching. That <laughs> was funny. He had 50 points. I was guarding in my rookie year. <laughs> he told him he should have stayed preaching. You <laughs> can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. Keith proceeded to score like 10 straight points on me. Coach took me out on one of the he greats, Clyde Jackson. <laughs> he was a basketball genius. He'd be Dr. a step J? ahead, uh, a thought ahead, uh, play the game like a chess game. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have James to Worthy? play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. You have to get inside his mind. Because he's going to treat you. Us in a room, you know, Matt, Mike is going to dominate Jordan, you physically. Myself and Bird. Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. Did you notice something during those They all talk about his mom. Those are some of the best basketball players Ever. of all time. And they all sing Bird's praises like they were former assassins who had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Wick and they're just happy to be alive. Yeah. Bird excelled during one of the most talent-rich periods in league history. The abridged list of his basketball Bro, rivals my, look at like all his legends. Dr. J and Moses Malone on the Philadelphia 76ers. Sidney Moncrief on the Milwaukee Bucks. Sydney. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, and the Bad Boy Pistons. Dominique Wilkins on the Atlanta Hawks. Bernard King on the New York Bernard. Knicks. People forget about Bernard Michael King. Jordan on the Chicago Bulls. That's young MJ. And Ralph Sampson on the Houston Rockets. That was the young Rockets, too. And, of course, Magic Johnson, James Wooden, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Los Angeles Lakers. All right. There's no point avoiding it any longer. We have to look at Magic versus Larry. Larry. If you have Magic over Larry, it's because he has five rings to Larry's three, had a peak that lasted about Ooh, two or three years passes, longer than passes. Larry's, and had a two and one record against Bird Celtics in the finals. In the finals. Perfectly legitimate, That's passed. completely respectable. I reacted to both of them. But in the interest Larry of making Bird's case, and allow Magic. me to retort. For nearly the entire decade of the 1980s, the Eastern Conference was irrefutably the more competitive conference between the two. He's telling me Considering the, the Lakers had a cakewalk. Bird to have made oh five finals appearances what? is just oh. as impressive as Magic's not. What? As for the head-to-head -head record responsible for Magic's two extra titles, he had more help. Seriously, the Celtics' big three and the Lakers' big three get compared all the time historically as if they were of equal caliber, but weren't Magic's accomplices just a step above Bird's? A little bit. No disrespect. The Kevin McHale, Kevin Robert McHale Parrish. And Robert Parrish. But Kareem was the alpha dog on the 71. I mean, that is Kareem, was the best player for at least two of the Lakers' five titles. That's it's Kareem, bro. Robert Parrish is good, but I mean, he's going to get Kareem. was the number one pick out of UNC after Defensive winning the championship God. as the Rebounding best player God. on a team that had Michael Jordan on it. Throw in the fact that Magic got to be coached by Pat Riley, one of the most brilliant minds in basketball that history. Is a fact. And you could say that the Magic Bird argument comes down to one thing. Luck. With support. So if their careers come down to luck, the question luck. just becomes who you would rather take. Now, I'm not making this video to tell you why oh my you God. shouldn't take Magic. I'm making this video to tell you why you should take Bird. Not just over Magic, but oh over everybody. My. I thought One he thing that helped was the fact that his play would translate perfectly into the league today. A six foot nine sharp shooting forward. Yeah, nah, in the back nah, Larry. Average double digit rebounds Larry will be kind of what Luka is, but taller. And a little bit better. Because I think he shoots three better. Think Larry shoots. If you look at Luka and how Luka's dominating right now, that's exactly Larry. But taller, can shoot better, and play better defense. And kind of rebound better. But if you say, I take Bird. Bird probably averaged, he averaged 10 then. He probably averaged 12 rebounds now. Beer, he'd gobble up boards as a power forward. He'd be an offensive mismatch against everybody yeah. as a small ball center, and his off-ball skills and passing would pair perfectly with the flow. Of I feel like he'd be just like Luca, but taller and better three-point shooting and, three and free throw shooting. Advancements, and we're talking about a player who could have stuck around so long they would have had to rename the league. As you've been watching Tuck. these clips of Bird, I would hope that you would notice something. He always knows where everybody, everybody is. is. Yep, he does. Watching Bird play basketball is like watching those monsters from a quiet place that know where you are if you make any noise at all. Bird had a level of Oof. clairvoyance that bordered on the unnatural. In 85, what the he ended up one steal away from a quadruple double after playing just the first three quarters. He could have played it. What the? was famously infectious and helped transform the Celtics of the 80s into an ideal that basketball teams no. at all levels are still shown tape of. They moved the ball with precision and intent, always looking for better for shots somebody to get open, yep. to get the entire team involved in the effort. That fact is almost entirely attributable to Bird and his wizardry with the ball. 
This acumen also helped Bird become the only player with a GOAT claim to transition successfully into other basketball roles after his playing career. Yeah, he did get a GM job, too. Oh, hey, coach. Then he ain't a GM, man. Coached the Pacers to their first and only finals appearance and gave Michael Jordan as much trouble as he'd ever gotten in his career in the 90s. That's crazy. He went from playing Michael to giving Michael problems as a coach. Front office role for Indiana. He won yep, the executive Jim. of the year in See? 2012, becoming the only person to have Larry just a basketball of the year and executive of the year award. Like on the court or off of it, God. inside and out. Larry Bird sees basketball as only he can. That intelligence also lent He maybe have the best on on court and off court. Plays. Remember, NBA players get players. paid to win games. James Harden is getting paid nearly forty million dollars this year because he's supposed to help the Rockets win, win games. games. Victory can be achieved in a lot of ways, and the win column doesn't Ooh, care how it happens. Score. As Mark Sinclair to once said, "It don't matter if you win by an inch or, or mile. mile. Winning's winning." But when your team is down one in a crucial playoff game with eight seconds left, and you need to hit a shot to I stay in the Larry. series and keep your season alive, that's where players really separate themselves and earn their money. Love it or hate it, it's the players that Ooh. come through in the big moments that live forever in our memories. Some players, for whatever reason, were never able to do hey. it consistently. Some players were truly outstanding Dang. at it. Larry Bird was the best at it. Hey. Look at him, he hyped his own little wood. High five, give you the stats about his field goal shooting under two minutes with a score that's this close to tell you who has the most buzzer beaters or any of that. Take that for data. Okay. I'm just going to show you clutch moments in clutch situations. Let's watch 1985 him. against the Blazers. Bird drops 48 points, including this. He's sitting on 48 right now. Wasting on 46. Ain't no way, bro. No. Two people drank on him. He had nowhere to go. He just said, I'm going up with it. Bird sets the Celtic scoring record with 60 points with shots like these. 60? Oh, my. That shimmy? Did you see the dream shape? That's for for her king, the dream shape. That was the, you see the shape? Not all of Bird's clutch moments were singular. The bigger the moment, the bigger his performance. In game six of the, the 1986 NBA Finals, How do you even get that Bird shot? clinches the championship with a triple-double in what he calls the best game he ever played. Whoa, did you see the, the two, the two came over here, pull up, like he had him lost. Yeah, nah, Bird could be, Bulls. Bird be a top 10 player Bird today, like playing in the NBA. It before it's waved off because of a timeout. Hits another huh? shot to tie it up for real. He hit a shot and it didn't count because of the timeout. Then he hit this? What the? F and then in double overtime, down one, he does this. Oh, no, Bird's a demon, bro. No. What? What the? That's basically three, but. For three years, from 1986 to 1988, the three point contest knew no other champion but Larry Bird. Oh, he knocking them, boys. That's the one he did in the jumpsuit. I heard about this. That's wild. He will be. No, he. Bro. He will be so tough Eastern today. Conference Finals, Game 5. Tied at two games apiece against the Bad Boy Pistons, this enormous game would put the winner one game away from the NBA Finals. Ooh, let, oh, my Pistons God. Pistons are up one with stuff. seconds remaining. The ball goes out of bounds off the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas just needs to inbound the ball to win the game. He stole it. And he made a pass. Nah, he's OD clutch. Clutch defensive play. Is that Bill Walton? That is. He made the there steal. There are truly too many big games and big moments for me to go through without this ending up as a documentary. But that all leads me to this, what I really want to talk about. 1987, NBA Finals. Game four against the Lakers. Okay. Let's... LA is up two games to one. And the Celtics so they win if they go 3-1. The series and stay alive. Bird hits a three with 12 seconds left to go up by two. Hey, so this is probably when nobody was coming back from three ones. He's very ready to come back from a three one. Look at it like this: a three one is basically a three zero at that time. With eight seconds left, he makes the first. Does he miss the second? Miss the second. But misses the second. Yep, it sound like some sound like some monumental stories too. Seven seconds left. La got the ball. Point. That's tough. Byron Scott, the coach. Magic hits this, the baby skyhook. Oh! Two I've seen that play before. Down one. Dennis Johnson on the inbound. Bird fires it. 
What do you think happens? I mean, it's, it's a video about him. I thought he was going to hit it. wasn't that. When I paused the tape and the ball was hanging in the air, you thought it was going in. Bird thought it was going in. I thought it was going Magic in. Magic thought it was going in. I ain't in. never seen it. I've seen this game before, and I still think it's going to go in. I thought it was going in. But it didn't. I was going to say, Pat Riley I've seen that himself. Magic Johnson clip. We got lucky. And that, a missed shot in the NBA Finals is why he's the clutchest. Because after he makes the big plays, has the big games, hits the big shots, People even think when he's going to miss, time again, you expect made. him to hit every shot, yeah. win every game. And in those fleeting moments when he doesn't, when he looks like a mere human, when he looks like everyone else who tries to do what he does, you just can't believe it. Yeah. That's what Larry Bird did. He made the big plays so often, you thought he was going to make them every time. I definitely thought that shot was he going in. He helped turn basketball into a global phenomenon, paving the way for every Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James who comes through our lives. So he's he a... Basketball in its well, I think Kareem's the first team superstar, that is but... consistently ranked among the greatest of all time. He has the second highest win percentage in the history of the NBA. Second highest? Who has Magic first? By less oh, than one Magic. half of 1%, about 10 games. He was about 10 factor, games a player with no holes in his game whatsoever they called him basketball jesus <laughs> basketball he didn't jesus. get that name without doing something extraordinary now you got to be some crazy basketball. to get basketball jesus and he did it by playing it better than anyone else look what they used to hang with a championship Here's magic was. at bird's retirement in 1993 larry bird said that those women were so far another larry bird one day and Larry, there will never, ever, uh, ever be. I don't think it'll ever be another Larry Bird. To, uh, but we got something close to it right now. Player ever, but more important, a friend forever. Your magic call him the goat. Okay, to me in the video, let me know what y'all think. After this, do y'all think Larry's the goat? I feel like we do kind of got a version of Lay, but a little bit lesser Luke. I feel like Luca, but Luke, bro. I feel like those are two great comparisons. Let me in the video. Let me know what you think. If you think Larry's the goat, drop that astronaut that Celtic symbol down below. Um, let me recommend some more videos for me for basketball. JRU, I love y'all. I'm out.